Hello and welcome, Overwatch fans, to the EGF Fall Week 5 for Overwatch. Uh, we're, we're checking out the East today. Uh, we're going to be heading into a best of five match between the Ludlow Falcons and the Farmington Pioneers. Of course, as always, I want to thank our sponsors, the UConn School of Engineering and the UConn Gaming Club for helping making this season possible. It's a big, big time today, and initially I'll be solo myself, your boy Dell Overwatch here. And I'll, uh, later on, I'll be joined by Cool J, my, my partner in crime today. So, just getting into the match, uh, the format today, of course, is the best of five. We will be playing all four maps for map store intensive purposes. We will start off on Paul, we'll be going to Volskaya, we'll, we'll be followed by Hollywood, and Gibraltar will be our escort map. And if we need it, the tiebreaker will be, be Busan, but same format as last night. And so, for all those viewers that checked us out, we say thank you. We'll head right into the action of, of the Farmington Pioneers and the Ludlow Falcon. Uh, both of these two teams, uh, for me, are one of those teams that um, have a lot of potential to pop off. You know, we we've seen earlier this season, we've seen the Falcons, we've we've seen uh, the Pioneers. We I believe they've both been on broadcast at least once or twice. Um, and one of the things that is really stood out to me, at least from the Pioneers, is kind of the combination of Nelsay on DPS and his partner, I believe, Super. I know that they do a little bit of swapping, of, of course, uh, as most of these teams here do. And and from the Falcons, the standout part players have to be Fruity, Memes, and Glacier, I think. I believe these two are the support duo. Last time I saw them, I, uh, they, they just had some, some wonderful stuff going. And, and as we head into Nepal, the first map will be... Um, uh shrine i believe and and this map is dominated a lot by kind of this elephant statue uh fair play in the, in the in the back um and then a lot of uh McCree, McCree and reaper i think those are map picks that we've seen throughout the entire history of overwatch and this match seems to be no exception both teams looking to start off with potentially a double shield composition a little bit of variation we're going to see enemy girls on mercy and nelsie on on Farah. Something that they they've done with some great success on uh, uh, Nepal. No, 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 not Nepal. Sorry. Uh, um, the map on from Greece. I, I'm blanking on it really hard right now. Ilios. Yeah, we saw Nelsie pop off pretty hard. Uh, one of the things that I, I, I we have to see, you know, maybe like Doctor Anti Pants, maybe Nelsie can put this fair to great value. Um, Zin also is opting to pick the Roadhog versus having the double shield lineup, so a little bit different here, but we're going to head right into this first fight. Big hook, but going to deny that hook with Pierre's Mel, but the first kill will go to Nelsie with Farah. Looks like the, the Falcons will have the early fight advantage, but Zin uh, following up as well. You know, this, this a little bit atypical composition working out well, Zin picking up some more. Nelsie getting two for two, and the fight win will definitely go to the Falcons here. Uh, Largely due to part uh, uh, to, to Zin and, and Nelson, you know, uh, Roadhog Farah is not the combination that you think of has a lot of synergy. But due to the way that Farah kind of always pressures the off angle, it usually allows uh, the Roadhog to, to catch people off guard just because they're not used to being pressured. Um, we are going to see uh, a swap from Zoom here. He's going to swap to the McCree. Look, to, look to deal with the Farah, and that's definitely the pick you want to see. Uh, they're using Maywall to get the point. And they're taking a lot of space, but it looks like the first kill is still going to be Nelsie again. That's two, two big opening picks, and he's looking for more in the back line. Trying to find a lot of value, but Zoom trades out. He isn't going to get the kill. Both teams even the numbers, but we do have to remember that the Resurrect is online. But the Falcons and the Pioneers are scratching it out on point. The Resurrect will come out for Nelsie, so that it will see full strength. But Nelsie does quickly fall. But Nelsie going to go for the Barrage, going to find two. Not gonna find all the team, but Zin backing them up, and it looks like the pioneers are gonna be off to a, a dominant 50%, um, taking taking it away from the Falcons here. Yeah, and so as we see the pioneers working to to really secure this first map win, the constant themes have been Zin and Elsie, but I, I really have to pay attention to Mayo's uh, usage of halt. It seems that he's using the fact that the, the enemy team is very distracted and he's getting a lot of value. Every time this man gets a pull, there's quickly rockets on the back. We are going to see Flux and Beat be dropped from the opposing team. Zen going to look for some dam damage with, with the roll hog and Mayo dropping the Pongo and the Pioneers will be very dominantly in control and this is kind of do or die for the Falcons. There's only 20%. We've seen QRU take to the point looking for the fight. The first kill will be uh, Mayo falling. Two-man advantage here for the Falcons, and it looks like they're fighting their way into the series. Big, big plays from Zoom there in the backline, shutting down the Farah, shutting down the Mercy. 
trading up the kills and, and the final members of the pioneers will drop but they did secure a hundred percent so as we head into this next fight you have to look at what's what's available for both teams in front of ultimates we have a lot of potential dps from from the falcons you know nelse and super uh have to watch out for how this beat drop is used or how glaciers bongo so as, as we come into this fight uh, we're gonna look for super to get a big flank potentially get this death blossom off and shouting that die 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 looking for the flank right now but nelsa is gonna go aggressive too equal trades on both sides bongo's gonna be dropped nelso and mayo finding some kills the die 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 from super gonna be a little bit more supreme as fruity memes is the last person to be alive and mayo and nelsa looking to put an end to that life and fruity memes gonna get the trade the 1v1 arista versus moira but so it didn't quickly follow up on the ball with anime girls and the reinforcements those kills are gonna come out finally but the beat drop from dr dps gonna keep his team with that extra health just to pass from my mob zoom looking to pressure nelse back but qru is gonna get the kill on nelse this fight could be anyone's game here composition swapped and it looks like uh the pioneers are committing for the win nelse gonna get a big kill on reaper and Zinn going for the follow up on on, on onto the Reinhardt. Reinhardt is going to drop the Glacier. Zoom going to drop onto Nelse. And the fight is just still a scrappy one at best. But it looks like both teams will take a second, kind of approach this with a 6v6 strength. We see the resurrected Nelse. And as of the, fire, the Pioneers and the Falcons scrap it out, this is going to be the last fight. And Weezy and Nelse showing up big and a beat drop from Weezy going to lead his team to the victory. The man taking the Destiny into his hands with the beat drop kills. But is gonna fall the snark using the flux just to secure that kill. And as this final fight goes down, Nelse throws down at what it feels like his fifth barrage at, at times. And it's just gonna help him secure that point. He didn't get in those final kills, but the barrage just did a lot of damage. And the hamster mines will deny the point touch there, and it will be a, a very close but hard earned victory for the Falcons on point one. You know. Ooh. We ta I talked about Nelse and, and his fair play, and it just seemed to be kind of the tide turner there. You know, at the end, he, he got a sneaky barrage, and, you know, whether that was due to Anime Girls' res, or or whether it was due to kind of the distraction of, of and the pressure of those last fights, he, the man did secure the victory there. Um, Zen and him have been, been you know, the, 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 the big tickets to the show, and it's it's been really, really interesting to see. However, as we swap onto this... Uh, the village map of Nepal. The, remember that the map switched to different. The, the point is dramatically different. So now when we're looking at composition, you have to pay attention to the Ryan Zarya and the May Reaper combo from the Falcons today. The Ludlow Falcons uh, are, are definitely a little bit more comfortable in the Ryan Glacier took to it earlier and it looks like they're gonna rush point and they're kind of look to kind of set up in a way that says this is our square and you can't come into it. And as the pioneers approach, uh, they're gonna try to get some flank damage potentially some poke not gonna find a lot pretty memes keeping the team very very healthy uh, a veteran player if, if we've seen that on egf and and it looks like the point cap will initially go to the falcons just due to the fact that the control is initially and there's not a lot of room here for the pioneers to get the value that they need from their dps and as we see teleports and reapers and and all sorts of exchanges here, you, you, you have to look at QRU, challenging Nelsa, using the teleport to get high ground and pressure the fair out the back. While the, the team's team looks for some kills on the ground, Zoom finding two there on Wizzy and Mayo and Snark fall, falling up. And it looks like this Ryan Zari composition is going to be what they need. Glacier <laughs> taking a little bit of aggression, charging all the way in, but his team has to follow up. Trying to just get that those extra kills on Super. And Zoom will find that exit kill, so that kill was completely valuable. What it seemed like a risky charge from Glacier just ended up being a little bit of extra time to secure. And so as as you kind of approach this this point, you know, we, we talked about how the, the pioneers can kind of get back into this this map and they just have to use the fact that they have so many angles and pressure from every every angle possible. Because as I say that, Zin is gonna drop. Not, not exactly the split you want to see when your own team starts mem down a member of tank, but Nelsay still going in looking for the pressure. Anime girls, uh, gonna gonna let the man drop and not gonna go for the resurrect, but the beat drop will come out for DPS and <laughs> three DPS really trying his hardest to just keep his team with the pressure. And it's kind of a, a flip situation we saw from last point. You know, last point we saw the pioneers take an early high, high percentage lead, but. It proving that anyone's match is today, the Falcons and the Pioneers are just duking it out. 
And from the ultimate side, we have the Graviton Blizzard combo from Snark and Zoom. And it looks like we are going to see Snark deploy that with the Blizzard followed up. And then has his point percentage to take up. Super is going to look up for the Blossom just for some extra damage. But trade kills are going back and forth. And it looks like this could be anyone's game. The Pioneers are trying to fight that in with just their tanks remaining. And as their tanks fall, 100 to 0 from the Falcons. And what a way to answer back. And, you know, tying up the series 1 to 1. Uh, or sorry, tying up the map one to one, uh, really big thing. You know, we saw them kind of get more into their own with this map of Nepal Village, and as we head into Sanctum, um, you, you have to wonder. Okay, we've seen kind of both uh, extremes of the strategy. You know, we saw Nelse and 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 the pioneers really be successful with open space, but then we saw Glacier uh, and and his team really use Village. To, to their advantage, and as we see these swaps, you know, this is what, what it's just going to be an interesting fight, you know, we're seeing QRU um, kind of stuck on on the Reaper, which is an interesting pick, uh, but we also say Nelse swapping the, the Vera that we've seen, and Anime Girl swapping the Mercy, to see what Hans and Moira, so the compositions are definitely different, QRU opting to swap uh, for the Ash, maybe expecting another Vera pick on this map, um, Fruity Meme's going to swap off to the Mercy, so just a little bit different stuff, but I both teams opting for the Arisa Hog composition here on Paul Sink. Or sorry, Paul Sink again. Yeah. And as, as the first hook goes to Zinn, getting a pull off the map, Schnark answering big. Both teams fighting for these, this early fight. When Zoom, Zoom has a fair mercy pocket and is using kind of this angle to slide, just give this little extra pressure. And, and it's kind of trapped Mayo in this corner. And Mayo is quickly the fall. Glacier and the rest of his team going to get that point secure first. And it looks like the Falcons are gonna take that initial point and secures the point percentage. And it looks like potentially we're gonna see some swap. Nope, uh, we're gonna see both compositions stay relatively the same, the Hanzo Reaper DPS and the Yash Farah. So a little bit different composition, but definitely have to be give advantage to the fact that the Farah Mercy has a pocket and there's not much you can do about that. Uh, from the side of the Pioneers, Snark ends in mutually a surge destruction there with some of the hooks into the pit. Uh, interesting turn of events there, not exactly what you want, but at least the trades will be exchanged. And as these fights go down, we, we just see QRU and Zoom just completely shutting down any hopes of, of, of attacking the point. And as I say that, the point does get flipped due to a little bit of C9 awareness, but Largely, the, the Falcons are gonna maybe stay in control, but not if Nelsie has anything to say about it. Fruity Memes quickly resurrecting that, that, that kill from Nelsie, but what a pick there. And, and you have to remember that 10% is a big difference. Instead of having 50% now, they, they only have, uh, you know, they're, they're working on it a little bit slower, about 12 whole seconds. So as we head into this fight, we are gonna see Nelsie swap to the Hanzo, or from the Hanzo to the Ash, looking to counter off the Inspera, but the ultimates are just definitely in favor of uh, the, the Falcons here. Opting for Barrage early, Noom's gonna drop it with the beat countering it from Weezy. Hulks again, Mayo off the map, but Shark quickly is back. So the trades are, are flying out. This battle is very tight. We see Bob, we see Poops, we see Ash, we see Zoom. Zoom gonna get some more kills than the rest of his team, and largely uh, Coalescence will be popped uh, from DPS. Uh, not necessarily needed, but a lot of ultimates used there on the side of the Falcon. And as we head into potentially the last fight for the Falcon, they're gonna need to study a lot of value from Glacier's Bongo. Mayu doesn't quite have it online, but sure they will before the fight. And this Bongo Coalescence is gonna be the big decider here on this fight. One of the things that we're seeing from Glacier is gonna put it right on sighting point, which allows a lot of damage to be shut down. A lot of kills going on for the Falcons, putting them in a really good position to see this last fight. Brody Beam's grabbing a res and Super going for the last touch effort, and the double boop almost knocking him off the point, but, but a little bit of his communication is gonna allow Super to stay there, but he will drop. And as we we tick down these final seconds of overtime, we will see the Falcons take a map one in a little bit more convincing fashion than they started the series. You know, Ludlow really popped off there as we, we they came into their own farm, you know, started a little bit slow and trying, but put it back together. We're going to see the first play of the game go to QRU, which is, you know, definitely a, sh a showman shift of, of this Reaper ult. And we talked about uh, Blossoms and how they're used, and, and this Blossom here, when the signal was kind of out of out of the picture, just allowed him to get these extra kills, this extra damage, and clean up that final point there on the ball bullet. Uh, wonderful stuff from both teams, of course, and, and as we head into this next map, it's, it truly seems like to be an 81's game. 
Um, you know, one of the trends that we saw last night in the Alaska map, we're seeing again here uh, from those cards, kind of these high participation, high kill to participation cards. And what that means is that every single fight is very, very scrappy. Lots of people involved. And one of the things that you 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 wonder how it'll change is how will these 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 team strategies how will they adapt because we've seen a lot of fluidity whether it comes to tanks DPS and even support so as we head into Volskaya uh, what will the compositions be how will they work out in difference and as we do we're gonna be heading into Volskaya after a quick moment of uh, of getting these teams set up. And welcome back, Overwatch fans, to the EGF Week 5 official East series with our teams here today, Ludlow Falcons and the, and the Pioneers. One of the things that will be joining us today is my man, Cool J. How are you doing today, Cool J? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm excited to see some great Overwatch action. I'm sorry I missed out on that first map, but I'm wondering if you could maybe let me know what we saw. No worries, no worries. So what we saw is the farming pioneers uh, start off very initially strong here in Nepal. They they definitely had a lot of power from the LSAs from from the Farah pick, and it seemed like anime girls, Farah and Mercy just seemed to very be a very good composition for themselves. But then the answer back from Zoom and QRU, uh, just using Ash, using Hanzo, using Farah of their own to kind of find that success in those final points, uh, leading them to the Nepal early victory. And as we head into this attack, we're gonna see the Ludlow Falcons start off here on the first, uh, <laughs> the first attack, and the Farmington Pioneers uh, start on defense. And, and as we see these compositions start, what are you noticing, Cool J? Well, honestly, the Ash Hanzo um, is something I really like to see, but it's not something I was expecting to see. Also, them playing that Roadhog. Uh, but on the other side, Ludlow, they're playing definitely a not meta composition, but that's something that I've kind of come to expect from them. They always try and come out with some crazy compositions. I can't really count them out. Um, but also, as you mentioned, I do remember watching Nelsay and Anime Girls. Their pharmacy combo is deadly, and I expect them to pull it out on their attack run on this map since there's so much open space for that far to work. Yeah, definitely. And as we head into these first fights, paying attention just to kind of the, the Schnark on the Reinhardt, playing very aggressive here. Looking for a lot of room. Nelsa up on the top, though, with the Ash, and get a lot of value on the Dynamite. And the first kills will go out in favor of these Pioneers here, with with, with the Falcons uh, getting some quick kills of their own. And as is Ash from Nelsa just gets Dynamite after Dynamite, he will eventually drop. And it looks like these Falcons will take his first point of Volskaya. Yeah, and what they're really taking advantage of here, I really liked this setup from the Falcons. We see them using Zoom's Maywall to really create enclosed spaces and force the side of the Pioneers to engage them when they don't really want to take a fight. Uh, it seems like we are going to be needing a pause out from the Pioneers here, having some technical issues. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, really using that May to set things up. And what we really saw there was kind of taking advantage of the fact that there was no finishing power for this Pioneer's defense. They have a lot of damage coming from the Hog, the Ash, the Hanzo, but all of its bursts, they don't really have any way to finish off low health targets, and they were really struggling in doing that. Yeah, definitely one of the things that you, you're kind of seeing is kind of the clash of the old meta versus the new. Um, one of the things uh that you you pay attention to with, with the Ryan Zarya is kind of how this this composition mirrors goats in a lot of ways in play style and methodology and then kind of now where you see kind of the Arista style of just 
playing a lot of damage and and it seems that uh we've seen the success uh, of the pioneers with with their risk compositions and their high damage compositions they do they do very well against some of these teams that are a little less coordinated but what we're seeing decisively from the falcon is the nature of aggression and tempo and they just don't relent uh, as soon as they get in your face and that's kind of a throwback to that goat style that we saw a couple of weeks ago, uh, Mr. Cool J. Yeah, them coming off, them coming out on goats definitely was a blast from the past. And I think the thing that people don't realize is that, yeah, goats may be gone, but these metas are still heavily influenced by the things we learned in goats. Yeah, exactly, and and that's you know kind of showing the evolution of of Overwatch. You know, you started with. You know, whatever composition you want to say, or a triple tank or dive, what, what, whichever region in the world you're in. But the target focus came, and then Goats taught us a lot about positioning and teamwork. And now, as we, we head into these fights uh, and, and we resume these gameplay, we're going to just see the match. Will the mechanical skill of the Pioneers or the teamwork of the Falcons pull ahead? Um, one of the things that I think we, we're going to see quickly determine this fight is the Shatter from Snark. There is some ultimates building up on the on the way of of the pioneers, but having the Earth Shatter online potentially could make this a very fast noble. And it looks like our teams are ready to get going. So let's see if your prediction turns out to be true. As we're getting into this first engagement, they had a very fast cap, almost six minutes here. As they're approaching the second point, they're starting to make their way on. Oh, Kiru though, he gets caught out. The Dragon Strike comes out from Super. I'm not really sure if that was the best value they could get out of that play, but still a great first pick from Nelsi to really shut down this attack. However, a huge Shatter comes out for the Falcons. They're not giving up three kills. There comes a Krepton. All kinds of death raining down from the side of the Falcons. And I think they're gonna get the cap here. It looks looking like indeed, you know, the overtime spawns will be in effect, so the touch will maybe happen from Easy, and it looks like these fast fights might be what they need. Din's gonna get a quick on DPS, but the Blizzard will secure that point capture. And as we saw it kind of play out, Snark had the eye of the Kaiser and got that big, big shatter, even with all the best attempts to deny it with the Arisa Field. And, and one of the things that I think you, you, you wonder what's going on, you know, I don't know Snark personally. I don't know the, the, them at, at all. I don't know their personality. I don't know what they sound like. But I feel he's like this. He's the type of guy that wears a monocle and a top hat. And, and that's one of the times <laughs> that he just really, he really felt himself there. The snarky boy himself, showing big on the Reinhardt shadow. Did you, did you see any plays that you like, Cool J? I mean, how could you not love that last play right there? Just coming onto the point. Yeah, they lose Okiru early. They say, you know what? We don't need a Reaper. We've got a Reinhardt. Shatter him all to the ground. Mayo tried to stop it, but he didn't have a... It was an amazing play. I couldn't help getting excited watching that one. Definitely, for sure. And, and as he seemed kind of switched sides, so the, the facts of, of this attack were... They, they did very, very well. It was very quick, very deliberate. They have a five minute tan bank, so we're in for either a heck of a hold or a heck of a ride here on Full Sky. And either way, I'm definitely happy. Uh, one of the things that we're gonna see change up potentially is, is it looks like we're gonna see a Bastion pulled out from Zoom. And so this defense is something that has become very, very popular now. And it, essentially the idea is that you use the Baptiste uh, Immortality Field in a place that's very hard to see. And it, it just allows your Bastion to get a lot of value. And as we see the, the teams, uh, you know, we see the Falcons set up this defense, it's, it's, they're going to be having a very scary threat. You have a Bastion, he has the high ground, what do you do, Cool J? Yeah, well, it's going to be tough. They actually did catch out the May thanks to the Sonic Arrow from Nelsi. So May going to be having to play a little bit farther back, might not be able to find the wall that they're looking for. But really what they need to do here is they need to flip the map. They need to figure out how to rotate quickly because they're not going to be able to damage down that shield in the amount of time that zoom can just melt their entire exactly and zoom gonna get that first for pick here you know proving that this composition is just a very difficult to use and we're looking at kira you using the walls just trying to isolate the team by themselves time using that multi-freeze to the full effect glacier and zoom gonna get some more kills and it looks like the pioneers are out of luck for this first first attack 
Yeah, and we see Okira making a great play here. Coming into the doorway, gonna draw some attention, and that enables her tanks, Glacier and Schnark, to get into that room and do some damage. They're gonna clean up the rest of the team, slowly but surely, but that's just the way they want it. That's just gonna delay their attack even further. And now the Pioneers are fighting a severely uphill battle. Yeah, you know, this style of play that we're seeing from the Falcons, it's very reminiscent of what we saw at Gauntlet. You know, a lot of teams using the Bastion on CCP, we saw a lot of uprising in the colony, but it seems to be working very, very well here for the Falcons on Gaia. And it just seems like the Pioneers have not found their way of entry into this series, or into this map, really. And, oh, and at, and, and as we see this kind of these fights break out, you know, we're seeing just lots and lots of picks and, and we're seeing potentially here you trapped. What do you think he needs to do to get out of this situation? You know, I'm not quite sure what they can do, but that pick from Nelse might be just it. 3DS somehow gets caught behind the shield. The Dragon Strike comes through, forcing out the immortality field. That's an important cooldown gone, but the Gravitic Flux from Snark going to take down anime girls they're going to use the blizzard they're going to use tank mode so many ultimates coming out they actually see a sound barrier on the other side though so that investment might have been worth it they use a they use a supercharger as well nelsi is still finding kills up here on the high ground on this hanzo he's looking for more he's got that mercy down low but he can't find the finishing blow and Snark looked to kind of enable that, that res from 3D memes, but wasn't able to find that final ability. So we have the three members of the Falcons left in a position where they could potentially be rushed. Uh, one of the things that you, you wonder how that is going to be used is Nelsie's Dragon here. He has it early. There's not a lot of defense other than the signal lamp, so potentially shutting down his D3, or DPS uh, on the Baptiste might be all that they need to secure this first point win. Oh, we see a whole hog coming out from Sheen. Zoom is going to go down. I don't think they're going to be able to get a res here. Glacier goes down as well. Three memes trying to fly into the middle of the team, just trying to have some impact. But the kills keep flying through for the Pioneers. They are getting so much damage right now. 3DS suddenly all by himself. Not for long. He's going to get taken down. And that was exactly what they needed. And really, it all rested on that opening. Zoom on the Bastion getting caught out of position. Sheen able to finish him off with that whole hog. Definitely, and, and as we see the point difference be uh, in full effect, uh, with that capture, they're down about a minute and a half in time, so they need this capture to be quick and efficient. And as we head into this, we see KRU kind of on this aggressive May position, looking for the wall, is going to find Mayo, but Ooh. Nelsie with the dragon. The hull into the dragons are able to take down Glacier, a lot of damage on some other members. The tank line of this... Um... Falcon's defense is down, and they are looking for more. Now it's just 3DS and Fruity Memes alone on the point. Glacier is going to switch to a ball to try and stall out. The time bank is still heavily in the Falcon's favor, but the Pioneers looking to finish up this attack and keep this map going. And Shark looking for some removing the flux in, gonna get caught in it after finding two kills of his own. Free Moon is gonna get the res, QRU, and DPS back as well, so there is a little bit of a potential for a contest. Mayo, however, will will not drop to QRU as Anime Girls finds those kills. Nelsay and Super Handling with some quick, quick kills of their own, trying to get this one capture as time quickly burns off, and it looks like they finally will get this composition, or sorry, this capture, with two and a half minutes on the clock. And now that was a great attack run. That was a great answer right there for the Pioneers. The Falcons came out, and they had an incredible attack. I mean, it would have been difficult to match that time bank. But the Pioneers show they're not going to sit. They're not going to roll over. They're not going to lay down. They're still in this fight, and they're keeping themselves in the game. Anything can happen on 2CP. I mean, we've seen full holds that have been just as long as this. So it's really still anyone's game. Exactly. You know, this, this series has been intensely close the entire way uh, that we, we, we've watched these teams. You know, the interesting thing is, has largely been these strategical adaptations. You know, we're, we're seeing kind of the, the Falcons take major advantage here just in the fact that they seem to have a little bit of a better plan in every situation we're seeing. And that, like, when you look about this, this defensive setup, you know, uh, having this Bastion boosted onto the high ground is very, very dangerous. And, and I feel like in the Pioneer's shoes, they're just struggling with it a little too much. 
Yeah, I mean, we saw how strong it was. They were able to hold for a long, long time on the first point attack. We'll see if they can keep that hold. As they're really not changing up their strategy at all, it seems. No, and, and to their effect, you know, they did burn off um, almost four minutes of time. That might be the thing that they need. It looks like we're going to see the Falcons uh, be, strategy be matched by a strategy of the Pioneers of their own. It looks like we're going to have the Space Wars be Space Wars fight, but using the Symmetra to, to catch the flank. And Q, are you looking to escape with his life, but is going to finally get away from that situation and just trying to deny the setup. And as we see the Pioneers get to the high ground, they will have the double shield. They will be looking to potentially Ooh. burn, but Nelsay will drop almost immediately. Zoom! Showing that he is indeed the Alpha Bastion player. Yeah, I, I mean, I really like what they're trying to do here, but that setup really is not the way to go about it. And as we saw, they just got totally melted, and it seems like they're going to be giving up on this strategy as Nelsie has swapped over to the Genji. I'm not sure if that's going to work any better for them. I think they would be better served continuing with the Bastion. Um, now he's on the Hanzo, so we'll have to see how this one works out for them. We might be seeing a full sail swap. Yeah, the, the comfort picks are, are trying to be, be taken, and, and the teleport, kind of an interesting setup. Nelse and the rest of the Pioneers will just teleport to high ground, pressuring the rest of the team back. And it looks like the Falcons are going to be taken up on Mega for their, their defensive hold. Yeah, they're tanking down on that Mega health pack. As you mentioned, they've relinquished the high ground. I'm not sure if that was a good decision. We are seeing the offense matrix coming out from the Pioneers, and that's going to give them a lot of space, but the Maywell is going to deny them. Sheen and Mayo get cut off. They're going to get taken down. So many kills coming through. Anime Girls tries to get the res, but unfortunately going to get cut down. And there's the team kill gong after a dominating team fight from the Falcons. Perfectly timed Maywell from Okiru set that whole play up. And you have to remember, you know, there's only 30 seconds left. How did these these Pioneers players get control in these last final seconds of both Sky attack? We see Okiru again in position, trying to find the Maywell in the back line, trying to find Anime Girls. Can he finish off the kill? They're getting the freeze. He's looking for it. Able to get the kill on Anime Girls, surrounded by so many members of the Pioneers defense, and that is a huge blow. They're going to lose that support for this fight. They only have the Batiste, they won't have the res. The tank mode coming up from Zoom, and they're not even going to get a tick. A great hold there from the Falcons, and now it's all on them to get one tick in five minutes. Yeah, you know, we we contrast kind of these maps. So, you know, Nepal started off one way, uh, and that way was the dominance of the Pioneers. And they've kind of been put on the back heel. It's continually surprised by the strategical um, strategy of, uh, of the Falcons. You know, the Falcons definitely have the advantage here in the macro gameplay. And it, and it makes you wonder, you know, when you see players like Nelse, when you see players like Anime Girls kind of rotating their hero picks over and over again i feel like they're just struggling for their dominant strategy and on this defense you know you, you wonder are they just going to be mirroring the, the strategy that held them so well or are they going to go back to what they know and it looks like at least initially we're going to see them go back to what they're comfortable on and that seems to be the hanzo reaper composition here on defense yeah uh, it should be really interesting seeing how this defense works Coming out of the Ludlow Falcons is impressive. Yeah, and as we head into this attack, five minutes of, of, of time just to capture a little bit of points. So we'll see what the Falcons can do here on attack. And they're coming in for their setup. We're going to see Okiru teleporting up top. He's over top of them trying to get damage down onto this Pioneer's defense. The Pioneer's doing whatever they can to hold them back. Trying not to get hit by the Maywall. And Snark goes a little bit too aggressive there. He's going to get taken down. And wisely, the Falcons are going to be retreating. Sheen gets a great hook onto Glacier. They're going to get another pick there. Oh, and that was not a clean disengage. That's going to take a lot of time out of the time bank. A good first fight for the Pioneers, but they're going to need to keep this momentum going. Yeah, so about a, about a minute burn, so we'll need to see about four of those left just to see this hold up. The stagger is very, very real. We didn't see 
uh, QRU die. He, he's he's kind of just sitting in the back line, and as his team takes the reapproach, it looks like he'll just be constantly pressuring from a different angle. Yeah, he was able to escape, but still not quite in the best position, as you mentioned. And uh, really, right now the pioneers are the Falcons, sorry, are looking a little bit discombobulated. However, a pick on the Anime Girls is exactly what they were looking for. Nose wins the Reaper Mirror and takes down Okiru. We are now about 4v4 on the point. Kills going both ways. It's still about even. They're just trying to brawl it out. And it looks like, finally, thanks to the DPS Lucio, it is going to go in favor of the Falcons. And they're going to take this tick and Volskaya. Yeah, you know, the victory shadow there from a Schnark. You know, we saw the man pin in on cooldown and it worked mildly well the second time and so he will find his team in the victory sitting 2-0 in the series you know definitely one of the closer series we've experienced here on this east coast but with a big shatter from schnark just pixely perfect just to get it right underneath that, that shield from a uh, uh, of of Maya. yeah that was a fantastic play as you mentioned perfect timing just barely able to get it out before that Arisa shield landed on them. And it was with plays like that, that the Falcons were able to take that victory, right? Exactly. And, and as we head into the situation, we're, we are going to be facing a situation where even though this, these matches have been incredibly close, you know, there's no clear victor between the Pioneers and the Falcons. So Falcons are up 2-0. So as we head into the, this next uh, fight, we have to pay attention to what do the pioneers do? We've seen them potentially swap in players before. We've seen them swap strategies. But as Halloween is not only Halloween theme, it is spookily do or die for the pioneers. And as we head into, as we head into my one of my favorite maps, the Halloween version of Hollywood, looks like our teams are ready. Yes. Are we playing Hollywood? Are we playing Halloween version? Uh, yeah, we, we've typically been playing the Halloween version. It's one of the things that is a little bit different is just kind of the general theme of spookiness. And as it is Halloween, we should be getting our Spooktober on. But um, we will be heading into this match. And so the, the Falcons, again, will be on attack. The Pioneers will be on defense. And, and as the Pioneers just had the unsuccessful defense, the momentum will be going to Falcons. So the, the momentum of the Falcons, uh, the Passion Mario Icons matching in lobby, we will see what they do here. Do, do you have any expectations for what compositions we'll see from the Falcons? Well, I'm expecting the Falcons to do more of the weird strats. Uh, really what I've learned from watching the Falcons over my time with EGFH, they have probably one of the best coaching staffs in, in our league, really. Um, because they always have these weird strategies cooking up. I mean, if they don't, I mean, these there's some real creative players. They've got some potential as coaches because they always have great they always have great strategies and they always have great teamwork. Um, and it's always very difficult to defend against them because usually in Overwatch you just see the mirror. You'll see both teams playing the same six heroes, and you really know how those fights are going to go down because you're used to playing them. You know what your enemy's win conditions are. And when you're playing against a composition that you aren't expecting, you don't know what their win condition is. So it's a lot harder to play because it's more reactive. Exactly. Um, the, the style in the strategic, so, you know, quickly copying those, those contenders teams, conflict teams, uh, using those resources just to get your head is, is definitely a big advantage. And, and one, one of the things that you see continually as a theme for the Falcons is the, the aspect of teamwork. You know, we very, really rarely see them be uncoordinated. And I think that's what is kind of the deciding factor in these tense moments. You know, when it comes down to a, cl a clutch team fight, the team that just has that little bit of edge and, and breaking together, a little bit of edge and communication are going to pull ahead. And as we see this attack, not too much different from the norm. We are going to see a Symmetra, though, from QRU instead of the Reaper. So potentially looking to sneakily approach the Bastion Ethan here on Hollywood. And we're going to see the Pioneers running a similar defensive composition as before. And I really, like, yet again, I really like what the Falcons are doing. They're using the Symmetra Teleporter to move across to the high ground. 
getting into a position as a team that is hard for the Pioneers to defend against. And now they've got a lot of options as and it looks like they're going to rotate around. Oh, but Schnark getting caught out. And these, these rare mental mistakes that do kind of cut them down from time to time. Zoom, though, somehow able to get into the back lines, takes down Sheen. That's going to make it much more difficult for this Pioneers defense. Okiru going down. We see kills trading for both sides. Zoom is still up here in the back line, still causing problems. There goes Nelse. There goes Wheezy. So many people falling down. And it seems like the Pioneers defense is going to be flattened here as we see the Falcons taking yet another quick first fight win. Yeah, I like to picture that this Falcons team is, is kind of uh, visually represented by the movie uh, Hobbs and Shaw. I feel like you have the calculated nature of Shaw in the form of Snark. You know, he's always making these aggressive big moves and then you have uh, Shaw or Vin Diesel from Zume here just really getting a lot of value on the Reaper and putting his team on the back if he gets those big big kills against the match defense. Yeah, we see Okiru swooping, swatching, ah, swapping to the Genji on the streets phase. It's not an uncommon thing to do. There's a lot of high ground here. No say on the McCree. You hear the shots of the cowboy ringing down, finding kills. Uh, Okiro got caught out and that really started the snowball. Unfortunately, that payload is going to stop very early on. Now they have to figure out how are they going to break through this because this is one of the toughest chokes on this map. Exactly. Hollywood is, is a very difficult map to be dealing with, but what we will see kind of this reaper battle go down into these two teams and as we see Kiori you switch to the ash we're gonna see the, a lot of ultimates being popped and also gonna get two there with the high noon the graviton also flying out the glacier and the shatter will be cancelled there from from Zin and using a little bit of expert hook timing just to help his team hold on to this defense oh. Yeah, Okero getting chased deep in they really wanted to finish him off but unfortunately they couldn't quite make it happen I really think that Deadeye from Nelsay while he was in the Graviton was key in that match. Um, that's something that, that's actually one of my personal favorite plays to make. A lot of people, when you're in the Graviton, they just kind of give up. Using that Deadeye, it's a very risky play, but he's able to get a lot of value out of it. Here comes the Bob, here comes the Cole. So many ultimates coming out from both sides, but the Falcons are the ones finishing off all of the kills. And they're going to win that fight keep this payload moving. Exactly, and, and as they, they secure this cart past the halfway point, this is where the attacking team really needs to, to, to get this point capture now. They do have three minutes on the clock, but, but a hold here is very costly just due to the nature of where this cart is. And so as we see these first picks come out, Shnark going to go in the hog, looking for early value, uh, or early value but not going to find it. A lot of ults being popped on the side Ooh. of the Pioneers. Elsie is going to find that first kill. And you know, some people might look at that, they say that's a lot of alts to expend right there. But what I saw right there is the Pioneers saw a window and they pushed the Falcons back. This is yet another spot on Streets phase that it can be very difficult to push. Teams often say you have to push it all the way through in one go or you're not going to finish it. Now this is a very tough spot for the Falcons to push from. The Pioneers did have to use a lot of ultimates, but they don't need the ultimates to hold this position. They only needed it to get to this position. Exactly, and one of the things that we're, we're going to see kind of shape these last two minutes of, of, the, of this attack is this ultimate usage. We're gonna see Super here approach from the flank. Sin gonna open up with a kill of his own and, and look to put this Falcon team in the position they need to secure this win. Yeah, we see Fruity Memes going too far forward. We saw several Snark hooks, sorry, several Sheen hooks finding kills in that fight. And uh, this is really what I was talking about as we see the ultimates come out earlier. They didn't use any in that fight. Now they've got four ready to go in case the Falcons decide to come through with some, but they don't even have any. Falcons are in a very tough position here because they have to figure out how they can come in and attack this position. Exactly, and this is what I was talking about earlier with how this point of Hollywood is just so hard to attack. There's so much uh, potential setup for the defense, there's so much space, and as we look to see the high ground be used in effect, Snark looking to work the angles uh, for his team. And it looks like they will catch Zin completely out of position there. And a big coalescence from 3D memes to kind of get this fight going. 
Yeah, a rare play. Melse, with the help of the offense matrix, finds two on the dead eye. They're starting to fight back. Sheen gets res, but I just think it's too little, too late. Zoom is still alive, still finding kills. Sheen comes back with the whole hog though. He's taking out Okiru. He's laying in damage on the Zoom. He can't finish anyone else off, but Zoom does go down. Super and Sheen all by themselves, able to hold that point. Exactly, and 30 seconds left, it's, it's no second chances anymore the, the finally the pioneers are, are being in their own form and as they look to close the series out we, we have to see what super does with this this die 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 or this death loss yeah that's a big play but also we see on the other side they have the sound barrier they have zoom has a death blossom of his own and okiru is close to a blizzard all of those could be key in this fight. And there's a Maywall. Sheen getting caught out again. They force the use of the immortality field, but Okiro goes down. Super with the Death Blossom. Doesn't find anything. Nelsay finds a kill as well. Zoom's Death Blossom is also uneventful. And now it's a 3v4 on the point. Glacier trying to stay alive, but he goes down as well. Everything in favor of the Pioneers right now. And there they go. One by one, the Falcons fall. And that's going to be the end of their attack run here on Spooky Wood. Exactly. Yeah, Spooky Wood is indeed, and, and what a frightening thought to think how the Pioneers have fought back. You know, they had been uh, definitely giving it their all this earlier in the series, but you just see this defense come out, and it, it really, really was very successful. Whether it was the Bastion on first point, you know, not necessarily getting the full hold, but definitely bought some time. But to the second point hold, you know, they used a lot of ultimates that got their way into the series, and now they're sitting in a position where they could even out this score. You know, they're sitting at a, 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 an 0-2 disadvantage. That means that they would have to win four maps in a row, but it has been done before, and potentially something that we could see uh, here tonight. This match has been incredibly close. And as we move into the Fal Falcons' defense, what do you think they can change to kind of get some of this confidence back they had on some of these earlier maps? Well, you know... I think the strengths of the Falcons is really when we see them on defense. They obviously had the great attack run on Volskaya, but really where they where they thrive is in their defenses. And we'll see how it goes here. They are running a more traditional comp, but we'll see how they work with their positioning, how they work with their timing on the fights. Really the key to this defense, what we saw in Volskaya, what we may see here is Okiru's positioning. When Okiru gets caught out, everything is done for for them. But if he's able to be elusive, able to find those spots, which he usually is, it's very tough to beat them because you've got a May just kind of buzzing like a net in your ear, and you've got Zoom laying down the heavy guns on the main lines. Exactly. And, you know, this this defense is very, very popular. You know, the Bastion, May, the Baptiste, the Mercy. It, it is something that we see a lot, but the dive kind of approach, it's very interesting how we see Nelsia on the, on the Genji and, and the Reaper from Super. Zoom getting to those first initial kills, potentially slow down this, this attack, uh, and and by his time, just a, a little bit of breathing room here on this first point defense of Hollywood. Yeah, we'll see how it goes on their second approach. Obviously, the great Maywall from Okiru catching out Mayo and Sheen on that last fight really just made it impossible for them to get anything done. Oh, here we go. Oh, a nice escape from Okiru again. They actually found his position. They were able to knock him away from his hiding spot, but they still aren't able to find a kill. He is such a high-value target for this defense. He makes so much of their plays possible. And we're seeing this rotate around for the Pioneers. We'll see how this works out for them as they try and approach the point. Exactly. The Bastion from Zoom in full effect. They're not going to connect on the hook that they needed. Going to get caught out by Okiru there. And Snark calling up with those kills. So this, this double shield Bastion composition getting them all the right value. Looking for ultimate charge. Potentially a little bit of trades. And Elsa is going to get the kill but quickly is resurrected. Denied from for the meme. So Zoom will be still sitting on this point. No percentage point has been hold, and the kills will go the way of these Blood Bell Falcons. Yeah, and one thing you mentioned right there, no percentage has been gained, even though almost all the kills have right been in favor of the Pioneers. That is the power of Okiru. He is just camping out on that point. His ability to stay alive as May is amazing. 
for a while there he was in a 3v1 and he was still managing to stay alive and stay on that point. Finally, they're able to wipe everyone out, but that's another strength of the Falcons. You can't win a fight against them until everyone is dead. Exactly. You know, Nelsie there impressively picking the Genji into the bastard and and not dying. You know, he was up the entire time. He built a dragon blade, but also just enabled his team to have this space because they were also focused on the Genji in front of the bastard. Yeah, and that Dragon Blade is actually going to be key right here. The Nano Blade being online, there are many ultimates available for the Falcons. The and I think they're going to use them here. They're going to try and force the Annie. We already see the Supercharger coming out. The Pioneers, I'm expecting them to do the Nano Blade. Nelsie uses the Blade, but no Nano comes through. He's not able to find any kills out of it. Oh, there we go, finishing up both supports right at the end of it, forcing the Blizzard out. Uh, but I'm actually impressed a little bit. I expected the Falcons to try and up the Annie, use some ultimates of their own, but they were able to largely save many of them. The ultimate bank looking about even from both sides, so now it's going to be key for how the Falcons re-engage on this next fight. Yeah, a little, mis little bit of miscommunication there in the NL Blade, but now say as a testament to the player's individual skill, managed to find some incredible value, and as we sit with three minutes on the clock, the, the golden box of victory is not very far, so the Falcons need to show up, they need to show up big, and there's a lot of potential for some big plays to be made in this fight. Yeah, and right there, the first play coming out. Several kills already. The sound barrier are going to keep them nice and healthy. The supercharger and the nano boost powering up their damage. And they're just doing whatever they want to do. And that's going to be it. They're going to roll into the box of victory. The pioneers are going to win Spooky. I like Spooky Wood. It's a good name. Yeah, exactly. And so now the score... Uh, answering up to be 2-1, two, two, you know, the Falcons have the lead, but the, the, the Pioneers are fighting back in, in the later half of the series. And what a what an interesting play of the game, you know, we, we walked, we wondered about that nano boost usage, maybe with the nano blade, but maybe it was intentional just to give it to Super when they least expected it. Maybe they didn't expect a lot of value from the nano blade, but Nelsay showing what a great player he is, 74% kill for participation, just really really doing a lot of work there to make sure that his team is winning and this next map uh, as we head into gibraltar it's it's gonna play to the favorites and, and the strategy i believe the pioneers you know we've seen them have a lot of hero pools we've seen them have very deep hero pools indeed uh you know we've seen stark play reinhardt we've seen him play roadhog I, I think what we're going to see is some variations of dive, and I believe the Falcons will stick to their Bastion or potentially go back to the Reinhardt compositions that were working so, so well earlier. One of the things that, as we head into this Gibraltar map, I wonder that what will be the decider? Will it be kind of the tactical prowess that we've seen from the Falcons, or will it be that individual mechanical pop-off from uh, Super, Anime Girls, and the rest of the Pioneers today. You know, it, it doesn't really matter what member you name of the Pioneers. They're all making big, big plays. And it doesn't really matter what, what strategy you talk about the Falcons. It all, all of them have led, led individual members to shine very, very well. Yeah, definitely going to be interesting to watch. But one thing I have to say is that the high ground is so important on Gibraltar. And it's going to be very difficult to run unorthodox compositions here unless they pull out something like a dive comp, which I would be very surprised to see. Um, it's very difficult to play non-meta on Gibraltar because the high ground is so oppressing. It, it is definitely one of those things that is oppressing, but I just, I just feel that from what we've seen over time is... The pioneers doing whatever they want when it comes to picks, and and it just seems that the the high mobility heroes of dive just really lend to their skills. All right, and uh, we'll just be taking a quick break for a moment. And as we head into this last map of Watchpoint for Walter between the Farmington Pioneers and the Ludlow Falcons.
Hello and welcome, Overwatch fans. Welcome back to the later half of the, the series between the Ludlow Falcons and the Farmington Pioneers. And as we head into this Bosch Pine Trabalco, just for all those fans out there that are paying attention to the score, we have a 2 1 scoreline. We have the Falcons in the lead. They secured an early win on Nepal, a second win on Volskaya, and the Pioneers have finally answered back with a win of their own on Hollywood. It seemed to be fairly decisive on Hollywood, but as we head into Gibraltar, it's still very much anyone's game. So the themes have definitely been the strategical uh, use of compositions from the Falcons and the mechanical pop off of the Pioneers. And as we head into this final series or this final uh, part of Gibraltar, what do you think we're going to see here? You know, it should be really interesting right now because honestly, the Pioneers. They've kind of got their backs against the wall. And I really want to see how they respond. They did have a great map just now on Hollywood. We'll see if they can keep that momentum going. And I think that's going to be really important for them here, is to keep that momentum going. We see Zoom and Fruity Memes on the pharmacy. We were talking earlier about Nelsie and Anime Girls, their pharmacy prowess. But Zoom and Fruity Memes are right up there as well. It's going to be a lot of damage raining down on them. We have to see how the Pioneers deal with it. Exactly. One of the things that we're going to see is, is Zoom on Farrah, you on Ash, and Nelse on Ash as well, and Super on Reaper. So a little bit different compositions, but it looks like Glacier and Snark will be leading this cart to some early push, and Ooh. potentially a big, big kill there from Nelse. Yeah, a great first pick onto Okiru, and now Nelse, the, he can focus all of his energy on taking zoom out and there we go he's going to remove zoom from the air okiru did get res but it's not going to matter the kills coming through in favor of the pioneers and the falcons are forced to retreat oh but a great halt hook gonna take down mayo that could leave and for the falcons to come through they did lose Okiru, but we saw on Volskaya that they have no problems pushing with just five players. And that seems to be what they're doing right now as they return to the payload. Exactly. And one of the things that you, you're wondering as this cart moves is where will, will the space be used? You know, we're seeing a very linear fight on a very non-linear map. It looks like we're going to see a Zub approach from the high ground looking to spam from Vera, but the challenge from Nelse will be coming up as he looks to fight that high ground. Uh, going to find a lot of value, even throw a bomb in there, and BZ is going to get that first kill. Yeah, everything just coming down in quick succession there for the Pioneers. Using that Bob, that was some great ultimate efficiency there. The one ultimate, one fight. And we actually saw them use less ultimates than the side of the Falcons, who used both the Coalescence and that Supercharger, and unfortunately couldn't find anything... Exactly, and Weezy here does have the beat, Anime Girls has the Coalescence, so this defense is looking to have some very big support. The hook full combo not finding the value that they want, but we will see kind of this approach as the cart comes around this corner, and this is a minute and a half left, so they need to see some success on the offensive side. I would say another issue here is Zoom for the Falcons is really having trouble locating Nelsay. He should be focusing on taking down that Ash, getting rid of that threat, but he really just can't even find him to get the damage down onto him. Okiru is going to take down Nelse in the end, but a whole hog from Sheen and a death blossom from Super are going to finish off the rest of his teammates. Exactly. Uh, what, we're, we're heading into this final minute, and this has been kind of the pioneers in their own element. You know, we are going to see him swap off. But Fruity means opting to keep the Mercy just to use that Valk as potentially a way to buy themselves into the fight. One of the things that you need to know is how QRU will get value from these ultimates. You know, the, the, the Valk and the, the, the Blizzard are going to come into big usage here. Oh, Okiru gets taken down, a great hook, great positioning from Sheen, but his Blizzard still setting things up for his teammates. Okiru actually gonna get rezzed up, all the kills are in favor of the Falcons. Sheen is in trouble, he's gonna go down, and the rest of the Pioneers fall as well. Falcons able to take that first. For sure, and, and you know, now as we see the Falcons finally get some momentum, this is where we saw yesterday or last night, uh, 
kind of the momentum of this map and, and, and the, the kills being trickled out here, you know, super dropping the QU is going to be very, very big. You know, the man advantage will be in favor of the Falcons as potentially even Zin drops here and will not indeed uh, just do some remarkable positioning from his healers. Yeah, that was some amazing play and, and really just as key to that was Okiru just missed the wall after that amazing halt hook, which, by the way, the Falcons have these plays on lock. Unfortunately, that one wasn't. Schnark tried to pull off the whole hog, but Super says, I don't think so. Drops down, teleports behind you. It's nothing personal. And Zoom gonna get the Death Blossom, though. If they're not phased, they're gonna keep on rolling. The Falcons looking like they're gonna win that fight and maybe cap this point right here. They're capping the point and securing that victory 4.2 so now from the falcons perspective the game is in their their control they just have, they have the snowball going they have a lot of room and they have the time bank indeed to deal with it and, and as we head to this third point the pioneers need to find success because remember the scoreline is 2-0 so if the falcons potentially finish this off as strong as they're playing right now this could be the way to their ticket of victory yeah, but one one problem with the Pioneers, and it's just making it easier for the Falcons, they're staggering themselves so badly. Anime Girls on the Moira just now throwing himself off the map. He was stuck behind them for so long. And look, now they only have one fight. This Blizzard coming down, they're going to be staggered so hard as this payload tries to make its way down this final stretch. I'm not sure they're going to have a chance at a real 6v6 fight here. Exactly, the bongo being dropped from Glacier, the ultimate's being popped from Snark as well, and that blunder will allow them to get that final cap with two and a half minutes on the clock, and what a big bet way to answer back from that first point, slow, so take me soft from the Falcons there. Shutting down the Pioneers completely out of every other point of this map, and securing not only the completion of the map, but completion with a heck of a big time bank of two and a half minutes. Yeah, as you mentioned, they were slow on that first point. They were really struggling. It looks like they might even get full held. But after that, the Pioneers were just reeling. They were really struggling. They kept staggering themselves, getting stuck out of position. And as we know, the Falcons play very clean. They have great teamwork. And they're always going to punish mistakes like that. Yeah, and so now the, kind of the, the pressure is on the line for the Pioneers. So for everyone, just to catch them up, the score is 2-1. The, the Falcons are in the lead, but this map could be the decider of the series because if the, the, the best of five means that the, if the score of three is reached, that means that team has to get the victory. So what that means, eSport fans, is for the Falcons to secure the, ma the map series and victory of this week five of uh, egf match is just a defense here so potentially that could be held on any point in the map as long as they don't complete so potentially series point here for the falcons we're going to see a, a, an interesting defense uh set up here and i i do say i think this is going to be a key to how how their defense is, is shaped this, this niche pick of heroes of long range and close range damage yeah, and we see them getting ready to get set up here. Falcons on this high ground once again. They've got the Ash, they've got the Reaper. Nelsa bringing out the Genji. It seems to be something he loves to play. Oh, Mayo and Zoom with the oink and yoink of their own. And that's going to be some quick kills here for the Pioneers coming out. And they are just rolling along. They are, you know... They had a rough showing on that defense, but they're showing that it's not going to phase them. Exactly. You know, Nelson back on the comfort pick of the Genji. That could be something they, they, they're wanting to use for Snowball, but we will see TRU answer with the, the switch of uh, McCree. Zoom going to go for that point to touch. Going to allow his team to get another fight on second point. And the anti from Weezy might not be enough to get those early picks, so Zoom going to get the first kill on Mayo. Yeah, unfortunately that anti-nade only hit the tank line of the Falcons, did not hit anyone else. The tank line were able to just, you know, do what they do, tank some of that damage, just stay alive, keep the fight going. Oh, but a nano from Sheen, he's on the back line, 
He's using that whole hog, but he's not able to find anything. His team falls around him, and he's going to go down last. The Falcons with a great stabilize right there. Exactly, and so two and a half minutes for the victory here on the Falcons. They're sitting in a great position. The clutch was incredible there, and also that Nana Boost being used by Weezy will make it just that much harder for Nelsay to find value. Even though there isn't a direct counter ultimate, there just is a lot of utility in the form of Roadhawk Hook and McCree Flashbang that could shut down this Dragon Blade. So potentially Nelsay or Super just has to pull out a miracle here. Maybe with a combination of Mayo's Bongo, but the first kill on, on Sheen is not looking good for the Pioneer squad. Oh, these hog hook combos, these these pull hook combos from the Falcons are so good. They're getting players almost every single time. It makes it so difficult for the Pioneers to do anything against such great Exactly, and so the Falcons proving their testament to their, their team strategy, to their work ethic, just really putting them out. But as I say that, Fruity Memes is going to drop initially from a big hook there from Sheen. And that could be rough. He had the Valkyrie up and ready to go. There are still some other ultimates on the side. Here comes a Supercharger Dragon Blade Nose looking for blood. So far not finding any, and he actually won't. But he was enough of a distraction, it seems, as his team is able to find the kills and win that. Exactly. And as we see here, one of the things that is, is, is been a, a theme is kind of these, these little misplays. You know, we saw Fredinians drop early, and that really was the decider of that first point. Not having a healer, especially as important as Mercy, just makes it so much difficult, uh, more difficult for, for these players to be successful. And it's so rare, too, to see a, such a bad mental mistake coming out from the Falcons. Sheen, of course, taking advantage of it with a great hook there. But usually the Falcons play much cleaner. And we're seeing them with a clean re-engage right here. Finding kill after kill and forcing the Pioneers into a swift... Exactly. And as we head into this final... This final uh two and a half minutes of, of this defense, we're seeing kind of an interesting ambush style setup from QRU, Freddy Beams, and Zim. Uh, they're looking to use this high ground to kind of surprise, potentially even use some ultimates uh, if they build them, but Zim is going to drop on the back line looking for that value. Yeah, and we see Nelsi, he's really trying to build up for that Dragon Blade here. There's still a lot of time on the clock, he should really get two chances at one. He's getting close to filling it up on this fight, but Okiru! Okiru with a sneaky positioning on this McCree. He's on this back right high ground. I, I don't really think he should stay up there. They know he's there now. He's going to try and get some cheeky damage, but I think he's going to drop down now. And as we head, head into this this hook, we're, we're looking for Snark trying to find value with this whole hog. Uh, and the, the, the bongo from Glacier as well, looking to find the value, gonna find what they need. And we're heading into the situation uh, where, it, again, it's do or die for the Pioneers and it seems to be where that's successful. They've always kind of pulled out these clutch plays. And so as we head into these final moments, what do you think we see from the Dragon Blade of, of Nelse? Well, you know, the key really is, it's gonna be on Schnark and it's gonna be on Okiru. Everyone on this Falcons defense is elusive. It's not easy to kill any of them. Moira and Mercy, of course, both have great movement. Moira, the first to fall. And what we really saw right there was some great coordination. They were able to use that Orissa pull to pull the team together to get some free damage. Uh, the Nano, unfortunately, didn't quite go onto the target they were hoping for. But I still feel like they got a lot of value out of that blade. Yeah, they, they definitely did. And as this, this take comes, the point looking to almost get there. Snark is going to get the contest, but isn't going to hold for very long. So I'm looking for value, but the Pete's, the, the Bongo, and the Death Blossom will be all that they need. The Pioneers now have two minutes to complete this payload. So the time being advantage for the, 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 the Falcons, but the Pioneers are not out of this series yet. Yeah, something I'm starting to see from the Falcons that's really causing this kind of them to let up this kind of attack they're really moving away from what gives them success they're starting to try and make these flank plays these hero plays 
going out of position like Schnark did just now and getting caught out. What really makes the Falcons so good is that in a 6v6 fight, it's so hard to beat them because they don't make mistakes. Now I think they're getting overconfident, they're starting to make those mistakes, and they're starting to get punished for it. Exactly, Nelsa getting that first pick on QRU, super falling with a kill on Schnark, and as he, these point kills, you have to remember that the cart needs to be secured all this distance, and it looks like they might potentially get another Nanoblade from Nelsa to secure this third point cap. Yeah, but we see a barrage from Zoom coming down, finds one, finds two, the Jedi from Okiru finds one as well, that could be just what they need to stabilize here, as they just have the Pioneers and full retreat, that's exactly what they needed, and there's less than a minute on the time big now, but they have the Nanoblade, they're gonna have the Death Blossom, they're gonna have the Sound Barrier, they have all the tools they need, the question is, can they make it happen? Exactly, and... We're going to be paying attention specifically to this Nanoblade. This Nanoblade is do or die. There is a beat available for anime girls as well. And Nanoblade is going to be popped from Nelsa. Not finding initial kill. The well got a follow up. The beat is dropped as well. Super getting the kill. Nanoblade finds one. And this fight is still very much open. Mayo going to get some more kills. And Freddy Meme is going to get a res. And as this, this these points tech down, it is overtime closing soon. Zoom looking for value, not gonna find a kill, Super gonna blossom, Glacier gonna bongo, kills trading, and it looks like the Pioneers might have finally the attack they need to finish out this point. We'll see, Okira with the Deadeye! Oh, not quite able to get the kills he was looking for, he was the last hope for that Falcons defense, but look at this time bank differential. Three and a half minutes for the Falcons, just one for the Pioneers, but... They've got to start back at the beginning, and what we saw earlier is the Pioneers' first point defense was very good. Yeah, exactly, and so now with a minute left on the time bank, this is going to be one of those extended overtime situations. So for the Pioneers to win, they do need to do a very, very brilliant offense. And, you know, one of the things we saw from the Falcons was a very clutch hold on first point. So that cannot be allowed to happen if they want a, a very good chance of winning this series. So as we, we head into this, uh, this point, we have to pay attention to the, these mistakes made. After one minute, anything that, that happens to the Pioneers that causes the C9 is going to be an, an ender of, of their chances here because three and a half minutes is a lot of time. Three and a half minutes with a capture two, it, it's, it's going to build and, and, and it could potentially could be a lot. Yeah, so we'll have to see how this goes. We're going to see Zoom ready on the pharmacy. I don't think they pulled this out on defense before. This is going to be um, it's going to be really a surprise pick. We'll see how it works out for them. I think this could be just what they need, though. Okiro on the McCree as well. Nelsie going to be staying on that Genji. There's no one on the side of the Pioneers to deal with this far. Exactly. Uh, the fire from from Zoom here is just raining down damage from above, looking for lots of value. The cart is still moving, however, and we will see both of these teams rotate. They actually did force Nelsie onto the Ash. He's not going to be playing that Genji pick that they wanted, but now Zoom is in trouble. We see one headshot take Zoom down so low. The dynamite from Nelsie, he's very much a capable user of this hero. Kills, though. Coming in favor of the Falcons. Just 20 seconds left. The Pioneers have to retreat. They need to hope for six. Are they going to be able to engage? What are they going to be able to use? Exactly. Uh, you know, ten, 10 seconds left. Time sticking down. No real ultimates in available. Potentially some mid fight. The barrage from Zoom could be the game decider, but Nana Boost from Easy also. Nelsa going to get that first kill on Glacier, so that Arisa will, will run the shields, but Fruity Meme is going to get a quick res. Zoom does have the barrage online. This final fight is going to go. He is going to pop it, but a big hoop from Zoom going to shut down that almost immediately, giving this team the advantage. Beat drop from Anime Girls, but a, a, a high noon from QRU getting these kills. Well, any team is fight here. Super desperately looking for value on the Arisa, but Nelsa will find some kills on Arisa. Banana Boost will come down. From, from Weezy, doesn't find the value that it needs, and it looks like the Falcons are potentially poised to clutch this out <coughs> with these respawns. Well, we'll have to see how it goes. That was a huge bob play from Nelsa, but Okiru comes in thanks to the flashbang. He's able to take down Weezy. Now, all they have on a point is a Lucio, but Snark goes down as well. 
Fruity Memes comes in, tries to get the res, but he's gonna get cut down. And I think that actually the Pioneers are gonna clutch this out. And they are going to be moving past this first point. Yes, they're moving past this first point, and, and now you have to pay attention again to the ultimates. A lot of ultimates were used at fight, a lot of swaps. We're gonna see Zine be on the on, on the ball inside of the Roadhog, so potentially a big source of, of kills was those hooks. So that's not gonna be available to them. And and you have to pay attention to Snark on, with the whole hog. The whole hog is a great zoning ultimate, so with the right setup here, he could force a C9. Yeah, we see the supercharger, we see the whole hog, they're just trying to push him off the payload, enemy girls goes down, Mayo goes down, and <laughs> there we go, just push him right off, the knockback of that whole hog, so oppressive, and that's all they needed, but that was a great attack round right there from the pioneers, it's going to be tough for the falcons to live up to, even with a much larger time. Exactly, and one of the things that, uh, you know, you, you wonder is that the cart was pushed just far enough for that three and a half minutes to be almost kind of expected. I feel like if you took an average amount of time, it takes about three and a half minutes to get there. So, so this series could not be closer. You know, even though the Falcons are up to one and potentially could close the series out with this attack, this match has just been close, bloodthirsty, and angry all throughout this entire series. And so, one of the things that we're gonna have to pay attention to is how. Uh, the momentum of of this attack works. So one of the things that I've seen is very common on this map is kind of the initially you get that early pick from a boob, you get going, you get rolling, and you, and you kind of snowball on on two or it's on through. And then also the the condition of not really being successful at the start, or maybe just getting a little bit of cart push around the initial corner, and then being held. And then what we what we see is that with these overtime spawns being in effect, that's when the big plays get made on the offense. And we just saw one heck of an overtime push, a lot of value out of the minute from the Pioneers. So you wonder how these Falcons will will set this up, or set themselves up to potentially win this series. We'll see how it goes for them. Zoom again on the pharmacy. A boob, Sheen getting get knocked off, and that forces the entire Pioneer's defense to rotate. Now they're in a horrible position. Down here in the car wash, but Snark gets hooked in and taken down. That's a huge play for the Pioneers. Going to give them a lot of breathing room to try and get to a better position. Super, though, going to get caught out. That far out, raining down from above. There's not much you can do to avoid those rockets. The other effect here is Okiru now on the high ground, uncontested, thanks to the fact that the Pioneers have been knocked down. Now is he going to take down Zoom, though? We see yet another great play coming out from the Pioneers. Exactly. The resurrection from Fruity Memes, keeping them alive. Two minutes and a half, two and a half minutes working here. Snark going to get a big hook on Sheen and the kills. Potentially Mayo dropping as well. A lot of ultimates available for either team. Potentially closing in soon. The coalescence might be the name of the game. DPS is going to drop the coalescence on the back. Here are you going to get a high noon kill? And it looks like the, the Falcons will put themselves in a position to have a lot of room. Here are you going absolutely huge from the Kree, getting lots and lots of kills. And as the final kills do drop uh we will see zine swap to that ball just to get a little bit of extra contest yeah but i really have to wonder what they're going to use here zoom it looks like we'll probably be able to build up our barrage okiru getting caught out oh nelsay goes down that could be very tough for them nelsay having the bob bob of course able to contest the payload could be huge in a fight like this with such short locations and we'll see if he's able to get back in time but this payload's already getting close to the finish. And Weezy goes down as well. Yeah, this last fight is something that is going to be coming down absolutely clutch. We're seeing Snark take the series for himself. Not once, but twice while his whole hogs decide the match. And Love Little Falcons get the 3-1 there. We're rather uneventfully in some ways, but wow. Snark just, just said, man, I want to win this game. <laughs> Yeah, and that's really what I was talking about. I think that um, I think that Nelsay's Bob was crucial for them winning, having a chance to win that fight. And uh, you know, when he went down, there really wasn't a chance for them. He wasn't able to make it back. And uh, well, as we just saw, that uh, as we just saw, you know, we did see the Falcons take that that 3-1 victory so that will be the end of our series today 
uh and you know what a series it's been you know yesterday we had uh Tugbo and i holding down kind of the last and bloodthirsty match and then today we have uh the east coast throwdown between the farmington pioneers and the Lodo falcons and, and as always the action has been brought to you by the yukon school of engineering and the yukon gaming club and you you have to thank those guys because without our sponsors, none of this action would have happened here today. As always, the production from the back was, was, was wonderful, and, and the gameplay was intense. And I just really want to say thank you to all the players, the parents, the coaches, everyone involved with the programs. And this has been our Overwatch content, or, or the final of our Overwatch for this week, uh, in our week five of EGF uh, Overwatch Official East Division. Yeah, honestly, it was yet another great day of Overwatch action. Great day of EGF Esports action. So, of course, we want to thank you for tuning in. Make sure to check back. We can catch action every week starting at 4.15 p.m. On Tuesday, we have some Super Smash Bros. action. Wednesday with Rocket League. And then Thursday with Overwatch. You can follow us on Twitter and Twitch at OfficialEGF for updates and all of our announcements. Of course, we wouldn't be possible without the support from our sponsors, the Yukon Gaming Club and the Yukon School of Engineering. This is Cool J, and you can find me on Twitter at CoolJ underscore OW. And this has been Dell at, at Joel Overwatch, and I just want to say thank you again, and we'll see you next time.